Something wrong with your doorbell? I don't know. I've been ringing and ringing. <laughs> Did you hear me ring? <laughs> Guess not. Huh. <laughs> Something wrong with your buzzer? Yeah, I guess. Your buzzer just don't buzz? I have it checked. Why don't you come on in and sit a spell? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, a person could die out there in this heat just buzzing themselves to death. Buzz, 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 buzz. Yeah, I have it checked. <laughs> It is hot out there. Well, it's hot under here. Why don't we go inside where it's cool? You can't hear conditioners busted. That call full of noise, they're gonna send somebody out. First your buzzer don't buzz, and now your AC is on the blank. Because all your modern conveniences are just turning on you, girl. Can you get you something? No, I'm fine. Coffee? No, I'm fine. Iced tea? Really, I'm fine. Would you like some bourbon? On the rocks with a splash of water. <laughs> you look beat. Oh, I'm not beat. I'm in a frenzy. What's in a frenzy about? Uh, I'll wait till you get back. I'm catching my breath. Why are you out of breath? Mainly from buzzing your buzzer. I'll get it checked. Mm -hmm. Here. Thank you. It's a nice dress, Patty. <sighs> Thanks. But it looks better on the mannequin than it does on me. Come here. Say? Where's that worthless husband of yours? <laughs> No, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, I noticed his almighty Thunderbird wasn't out front. Mm. Yeah, he's in town about something. <laughs> don't tell me he's actually gonna get a job! Daddy, don't start. Okay, all right. You feel all right? Yeah. Why? I don't know, you just look kind of flush. Oh. <laughs> it just must be the heat. Yeah, it okay. just must be the heat. Mm. <sighs> So what are you in a frenzy about? <laughs> Today I went through living hell. Oh, what'd you do? I went shopping with my children. It was bad, huh? Oh, it was disastrous. Something about department stores that make them go berserk. Now, it's like it activates something in their glands. We went in J.C. Penney's five minutes before they scattered out in all directions. You take my little Cheryl. Uh -huh. Bless her heart, she's a thief. A thief? She's a kleptomaniac, Elizabeth. Time my face facts. Yeah, we know. We got into the store and... It the second we got in there, she started stuffing our pockets, stuffing her clothing. It's like five minutes later, she ran away from me, and I saw her. I didn't recognize my own daughter. She looked like she looked like a beach ball with legs. <laughs> with legs? Yeah, she looked like a beach ball. Leg. <laughs> did you make her put it back? Of course I did, but it does no good. Stephen's in her blood. Well, where do you suppose she gets it? Uh, from Vernon Jr. Well, where was Vernon Jr. all this time? In the hardware department. Doing what? Chasing his brother with a hammer. Chasing little Roger? Yes. What was little Roger doing? Screaming. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord is right. And somehow he broke a solid steel J.C. Penny hammer. <laughs> How do you break a solid steel hammer? Don't ask me. But somehow, destruction's in his blood. But I tell you, it's the last time I go shopping with my children. Where, where are the kids now? Oh, I took them to Vern's mom's place. She has a nice big house. They have it leveled in in about an hour or so. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, nothing. You just sit back and enjoy your drink. I've been putting this off all afternoon. Oh, I'll help you. No, don't be silly. Oh, hush. I don't even have to think about it. I just put on an automatic palette and I fold. You don't have to be so particular with those t-shirts. Roy's got a jillion of them. Ugh, so does Vernon. Why do men wear so many t-shirts? I don't know. I don't know either. What are you looking at? Nothing. Hmm. Oh my God, it's got a TV out here. Yeah, it's an old one. I watch it out here, so. Whoa. <laughs> What's on? Let's make a deal. Okay, if you keep the volume down, I can't stand to hear them women scream. Ugh, I don't know what you mean. All that yelling. Oh my God, would you look at that woman? Where? <laughs> Dad, would you do that? Do what? Dress up like a chicken. Is that what that's supposed to be? Yeah, it's a chicken suit. That woman's dressed herself up as a chicken to be on national television. Well, that's stupid. Of course it's stupid. Besides, it doesn't even look like a chicken. Chickens don't have bangs. <laughs> chickens don't have bangs! <laughs> I would know. I've been around chickens all my life. <laughs> oh, Lord! What? Look, it's her husband! So? So? She's got him dressed up like a rooster. It's bad enough he's dre she's dressed like a chicken, but to get a grown man dressed as a rooster. Huh. I can never get Roy to do that. I should hope not. A man loses his masculinity when he's dressed up as a rooster. <sighs> Look, she can't even make up her mind. What would you choose, the curtain or the box? 
Box. Why? Because good things come in small packages. <laughs> Wrong. Small things come in small packages. Well, wedding rings come in small packages. Yeah, but once you get one of them, honey, go for the big stuff. <laughs> she chose the curtain. And it is a dream vacation to British Honduras. Just think of it. British Honduras. Say, where is British Honduras? South America, I think. Ooh. Why would anyone want to go there? Well, she sure does. Look at her jump up and down. Looks like she's about to wet her britches. Yeah, well, she can relax, because she ain't going. Well, she just won it. Well, she's about to unwin it after this commercial. You've seen this one before? I've seen them all before. <laughs> well, how'd she lose it? The bitch gets greedy and goes for the grand prize. Does she win? No. She gets a year's supply of frozen meat pies. From British Honduras to frozen meat pies. Ain't faint weird. Yeah. Commercial's on. Want another drink? Of course I do. Main reason I come here is to get away from the kids and to get bombed. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know what it's like having kids. No, I don't. And let me tell you, they are all the time underfoot. It's like living with midgets. <laughs> I'll take them anytime you need a rest. Oh, honey, I couldn't do it. Give me a guilty conscience. So, how's everything? How's Roy? Oh, you know Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Roy. Oh, quit grinning. You don't know him that well. I've known Roy all my life. Well, you didn't really get to know him until you dated Wayne Wilder, and we go, we all go double dating in Royce Thunderbird. Ugh, don't remind me. Well, why not? They were the most eligible boys in Maynard. Nobody in Maynard is eligible. Remember, we were all going to get married right after high school. It was going to be. Roy and I and Wayne and you. Yeah, but I ended up with Vernon Dealing. Yeah. You don't laugh funny. <laughs> Hilarious. Wait, what are you doing? I'm going to turn off the TV. No, don't you want to see the grand prize? Well, you already know what it is. Yeah, but you don't. Well, I don't want to know. Sure you do. Quick, sit down. Oh. They're about to start, okay? Okay, first they're going to open curtain number two. Just wait. Just wait. Ah -ha! Frozen meat pies. Just look at old Greedy's face. She's trying not to act disappointed, but who are you kidding, honey? You could have been a British Honduras, Missy. Not that it's any great, probably. Just one big jungle. Beats the hell out of frozen meat pies, though. Now, we're gonna open curtain number one. A brand new kitchen and utility ensemble. <laughs> big deal. <laughs> Look at her face. Oh my God, disappointment is carved on it. If there's one thing no woman wants, it's a new stove. Oh my god, now she's crying! <laughs> she's not gonna win an Academy Award with that. She wants us to think those are tears of joy. <gasps> Why do you watch this? Elizabeth, TV game shows have everything. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. Manly, the agony of defeat. <laughs> well, I think it's stupid. What are you doing? I'm turning it off. Don't you want to know what the grand prize was? No. A uh, brand new, Lincoln Continental. Who cares? Well, you should. It's better than what you drove. Roy's never going to get rid of that Thunderbird. He's had it since high school. He loves that car, Hattie. What's so great about a 1959 pink Thunderbird convertible? Roy says it's a classic. It's a piece of junk. <laughs> Sometimes I think he loves that car more than me. It's just a car. Yeah, but he says it can take him where he wants to go. That's stupid. Where does he want to go? <laughs> I don't think he has any idea. Well, good. Good. Well, we better get back to this laundry, or you'll never get it done. God, I hate laundry. Ugh, you can only look at so many pairs of fruit of balloon before you want to puke. Week in, week out, it's the same old clothes. <laughs> <sighs> I like to burn everything in this basket and start all over. Everything except for this shirt. Wow, it's all frayed. Well, it is now, but I remember the first time that, that Roy wore this shirt. And when was that? It was on our first date. He pulled up in that pink Thunderbird and this shirt with all the pearl buttons. He looked, he looked just like Paul Newman in HUD. God, these shorts are big. What? <laughs> <laughs> these jockey shorts. I mean, they're not that wide. They're for a narrow bill, but they're so long. I suppose. Why are they so long? <laughs> Roy likes him big. He says he needs a lot of room. It is hot out here! How's the body supposed to keep cool? Nothing to do but fix a bourbon and sit and sweat. Oh, I can't do that. You can't sweat. I can't 
take the drink in the afternoon in front of the kids. Well, why not? Because children learn by example. So? So, all I need is to get home to a house full of kids sitting around drinking margaritas. You just don't know what it's like raising children. No, I don't. And let me tell you, summertime is the worst. What do you do? I send them outside. In this heat? Yeah. I give them a salt pill and I say, play outside. <laughs> <laughs> don't they collapse from heat prostration? Anything to slow them down. <laughs> I wish you'd let me take them sometimes. Oh, I couldn't do that to you. You're not used to the strain. It would kill you. No reason. There's nothing to see. Yeah, that's the truth. God, it's depressing living out on the edge of the desert. Nothing green to look at. Yeah, but just think, millions of years ago, this land was underwater. Well, at least it would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like this land. Sometimes it gets too hot and burnt for people. Still too wild and hard for anything to grow. Oh, look, howdy! What? Look, look at that cloud. It's just a cloud. Yeah, but look at the way it's thrown a shadow across the land. Doesn't that shadow look, look peaceful gliding across the land? Doesn't that shadow look cool? Reminds me of a, of a cool, dark hand stroking a hot surface. Lately, I felt so hot and hollow inside, I've wanted something to come along and touch me like that. Elizabeth, what is the matter with you? Nothing, Hattie, nothing. Well, well, there's tears in your eyes. Don't tell me nothing's the matter. What is it? Roy's been gone two days. Oh, that son of a bitch! <laughs> no wonder why you've been acting so weird. Here, sit down, sit down. I'm going to fix you a drink. And you're going to tell me everything that's the matter. I don't want another drink. Sure you do. Quick. Just, just you know, the doctor's in. Don't you worry. No. I knew there was something wrong the second I got here. First you don't answer your doorbell, and then I saw you, and I just knew. I just knew something was wrong. Here. What brought it on this time? I don't know. It hasn't been the same since we got back. From Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed. I've seen the difference. But you've been nothing but perfect about it. I haven't been anything. I haven't done anything. He's the one that went off for two years. He's the one that got shot up. He's the one that has nightmares. Nightmares? Yeah, almost every night. Anyway, now he's back and he can't seem to get nothing started. He made me quit my job at the pharmacy. He's worked some out at his dad's place. He's done some roughnecking out in the oil fields, but he always seems to get himself in fights and gets himself fired. Well, why's he got a safe for himself? He says he's looking for something. Says everything's changed here in Maynard. <laughs> Nothing's changed in Maynard since the Civil War. I don't want him back the way it used to be. Elizabeth, Roy has always been wild and unmanageable. I don't want to manage him. I don't want to break his spirit. That's why I married him, his spirit. Roy Calder wasn't going to take no crap from anyone or anything. He and Wayne Wilder were going to shake up the world. May I remind you that Wayne Wilder is serving five to ten for car theft? <laughs> Roy's different than Wayne. I wouldn't be too sure. I just wished I knew he was safe. He could be hurt. Or with another woman. I hope that's all it is. Elizabeth, how can you say that? Any man worthwhile is going to look at other women. That's natural. And sometimes, sometimes they wander a bit. A bit? That man's done more wandering than Lewis and Clark. You're exaggerating. <laughs> Last year, last year, he went out for five days. Yeah, he had himself quite a time. You mean he told you what he did? Oh, sure. Well, you didn't tell me. No. Nope. But I'm your best friend. You're supposed to tell me everything. It was different then. We had a fight and he left in a huff. He drove off to El Paso and picked up a girl hitchhiking. What was her name? Patty, how should I know she was a hitchhiker? A little tramp, probably. A little hippie road and slut. <laughs> <laughs> a little, what'd she look like? She's blonde. A little blonde hippie bitch who never washed her nothing up. Oh there. yeah, there was one other thing. <gasps> what? She had a tattoo. A tattoo? Mm -hmm. On her arm? Not exactly on her arm. Oh God, where? 
on her behind. <laughs> That's disgusting. That, that it. What'd it say? Born to be wild. Ah! Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord! Yeah, what? Then, then Roy got himself in a four-day poker game, won a hundred bucks, and come on home. Well, weren't you mad? Oh, yeah. Didn't you want to shoot yeah. him? Yeah, I would have. I thought it was what he needed to get something out of his system. For a while, it seemed to work. Well, I tell you, half his trouble is that damn car of his. What do you mean? He gets behind the wheel of that thing, and he thinks he's the cock of the walk, the best-looking thing in these parts. He still is. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen the way that they look at him in high school today, the way that we used to do. Hey, I never looked at him like that. Patty, you still do. I tell you, it's that damn car. <laughs> <laughs> he gets in it, and he thinks he's young and free again. <gasps> Someone ought to take it away. I remember the first day he drove into town in that car. Mm, so do I. He worked three years for the down payment, summers and winters. Only slightly used. He and Wayne drove right through the center of town. Looking like a couple of Stoltons. It was bright pink. Glisten lights in. Mm. I remember I was coming out of the drugstore with an ice cream cone. Mm, what flavor? Vanilla. And the sun <laughs> off the hood was blinding. I couldn't even see the car. And then it passed into one shadow and I saw it for the first time. It was beautiful. And Roy hardly knew me then, but he waved at me. And I dropped my vanilla cone right there on the pavement. And I knew. He was the one. Yep. We double dated all through high school. <laughs> Remember driving, Patty? Mm. I sure do. More like wrestling matches. <laughs> one couple would get in the car one night. The other the next. We'd drive around and around and go make out. Oh, Wayne and I didn't even drive. <laughs> God. I want them back. I wish tonight was ten years ago and Roy was coming to pick me up in that Thunderbird. I wish that I could buy back some of the nights of summer I had in that car, back when everything was cool and free and driving along the highway away from this stupid town with the wind coming at you and the stars all the way down in the horizon, like, like diamonds all the way to dawn. Then pulling off the road somewhere, by a lake maybe, in the wind. Being off in town with a boy you love better than anything in your whole life. I remember us making love for the first time slow and gentle. God, he was gentle then. He taught me my body. I never really felt with my body before Roy. Suddenly it was like, like every pore of my skin was being opened like in a rainstorm, just feeling and holding everything you could possibly want right there in your arms. What I wouldn't give to have those nights of summer back. Just one night. When the back seat of that Thunderbird was sweeter than all the beds in the world. They took a lot of girls out in the back of that car. We were different. Were we? Look at how he's treating you now. Elizabeth, you're getting all sentimental and romantic. I was like you once. Let a man run all over me. What'd you do? I wrote a poem. <laughs> <laughs> you? Yeah. Worst day of my life. Never do it again. But that's what happens when you get all sentimental and miserable. You write poems. Like that old, uh, Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson? Yeah, that's one, whatever. <laughs> what was your poem about, Patty? I wrote a poem about Wayne Wilder. He was a mean man, and it was a mean poem. <laughs> I remember it. It was right after high school graduation, and Wayne Wilder told me he was jilting me. You and Roy was getting married, and Wayne Wilder was jilting me. Hit me like a ton of bricks. I went out back of the girls' gym, and I cried, and I wrote a poem. And you know what? I still remember it. Oh, Wayne, you don't know. I love you so well. But you son of a bitch, I hope you rest in hell. <laughs> Not much of a poem. Okay, I get it. But then I got practical like Hattie's always had to be. I saw Vernon dealing when I went back to where everyone was in their caps and gowns. He had just been fiddling under some car hood, even in his cap and gown. His, ha uh, his hands were dirty. But he was a good man. And, you know, I knew he liked me. So I got him to ask me out, and I got him to propose. Within a month, we were married. Poor Vernon. Never knew what hit him. <laughs> what are you telling me this for? Roy's just like Wayne. He ain't never going to change. Maybe not. And I know you. I've known you all my life. You need a marriage and you want a family. Am I right? 
Yeah. Then wake up. You can't leave the important things in life like marriage and children to the men folk. If it were up to them, they'd stick to their football and their fishing and their thunderbirds and they'd be boys forever. Now, if Roy straightens up, that's one thing. But if not, then, you know, you gotta make a decision. Maybe it's already been made for me. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, Hattie. Just forget I said that. Um, no. Don't tell me it's nothing. Please. Oh, my God! You're pregnant! Yeah. I knew it! I knew it the second I walked in here. <laughs> possible time. Wrong. It comes at the best possible time. Well, don't you see? This might be just the thing to make Roy straighten up and fly right. And if it doesn't? Well, then to hell with him. I guess you're right. Oh, Elizabeth, get up. Give me a hug. <laughs> oh, it's the smartest thing you've ever done. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, getting pregnant, of course. <laughs> Patty, I didn't get myself pregnant on purpose. I didn't plan it this way. Are you sure? Yes! Yes, I'm sure! I'm not sure Roy can handle this right now. He doesn't even know what he's doing himself. Well, that's not your problem. It is every bit my problem. It couldn't be any more my problem. I didn't mean to make you all sit. I just meant... I know, Patty. I'm sorry. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, say, mind if I use your phone? Figured I, uh, better check on the kids. No telling what devilment they've gotten up to. <laughs> Don't you worry. Everything's going to be just fine. You'll see. I promise. Hello, Cheryl. Cheryl, it's Mommy. Mommy. Your mother. Child needs a hearing aid. <laughs> Give the phone to your grandma. What's that? <laughs> Vernon Jr. threw a rock at you? Well, throw one back at him, honey. Show him his boss. Now go give the phone to Grandma, please. Cheryl, let's wait. Sounds like they're running her ragged. Hello? Little Roger? Little Roger, I don't want to talk to you right now. I want to talk to Grandma. Because I want to talk to Grandma. <laughs> yes, Grandma does have baggy elbows. <laughs> I know. Now go give her the phone. What? Oh, honey, of course Mommy loves you. No, I love you all the same. Do I love you more than Fred Flintstone? Yes. Paul Newman, no, but Fred Flintstone, yes. <laughs> it's a grown-up joke, honey. Now go give the phone to Grandma. She's what? Tied up! You untie her, you hear me? Do you want to switch it? Then you better untie her right this second. Marion? Uh, oh, oh, you were playing. <laughs> I thought they tied you up for real. <laughs> How are the kids? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, I do agree. There's too much violence on TV. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, I will pick them up at five. <laughs> no, I won't be late. You have my solemn word. Okay. Okay. Hello? What's that? Little Roger? <laughs> yes, it's good to hear your voice again, too, sweetheart. You're playing what? Sniper? What? Vernon Jr. climbed a tree in the backyard with a brick? Okay. Okay, little Roger, you listen and you listen very carefully. Under no circumstances do you go under that tree. Because he's gonna drop that brick on your head, sweetheart. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what he wants, so don't do it. Okay. Okay, yabba-dabba-doo to you too. <laughs> that child's gonna walk right under that tree. He has no more sense. Oh my God! <laughs> How strong are these? <laughs> Child has no more sense than God gave a screwdriver, is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> uh, what's Abba Dabba do? Is he Abba Dabba do? That's what Fred Flintstone says when he's happy. <gasps> what? What? There, there! There's a car coming up the road. Well, is it Roy? I can't tell. No. No. Well, are you expecting someone? No. Well, ain't that just the way? Here you're all pregnant and depressed, and people showing up unannounced. <laughs> Wait, I did call out for more noise about the air conditioner. Oh my god! What? That's who it is! It's Amy Lee Fuller Noise! Well, I asked them to send somebody out, but I didn't think they'd send Amy Lee. Well, of course not. What does Amy Lee know about fixing air conditioners? I don't know. Not a damn thing, that's what. I wonder what she wants.
once. Are you friends with her all of a sudden? No, of course not. Good, because you know our bridge club is not talking to her bridge club yet. And I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> of course it's ridiculous, but they started it. If we joined club, we'd have better games. We'd have teams. We'd have tournaments. We'd have, we'd have round robins, goddammit. But no, they love they with this. That's not true. Amy and her club belong to the country club. That's what they play their games. But we can't play during regular races because we don't belong. And those are the rules. Well, they're stupid rules. Well, it's just like Amy Lee said. What's the point of a country club if you can't keep people out? Well, I agree. <laughs> but why they gotta keep me out? Well, if it means so much to you, then just join the damn thing. Oh, you better believe I will. As soon as I get burning off his ass and making more money. God, that man's hard to motivate. It's like pulling a mule through mud. <laughs> no, don't answer it. Why not? Because it's Amy Lee Fournoy. Well, that's no excuse. She'll ruin our afternoon. Well, let go of her arm. Amy Lee is so tacky. She thinks she's cute, but she's tacky. Let me go. You know who picks out her wardrobe? I bet it's Ray Charles. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> <laughs> you mean one can expect many clever ideas from a woman without two strokes in one year <laughs> no no <laughs> i just love the way you're wearing your hair hattie yes yeah it's just as cute as a bug cute as a bug <laughs> cute as a button i mean <laughs> button elizabeth how's roy roy mm. oh roy's fine at amy lee oh i'm so glad yeah how's Cletus? <laughs> Cletus is so well. So well at the store. Cletus is so funny. <laughs> I have to keep a short rein on him though, or he just overstock everything. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want that to happen. No, indeed. God, Amy Lee, this is just a really big box. <laughs> Honey, quit worrying about the box. So what have you been up to? What have you been doing with yourself, Hattie? Well, keeping up with three children is a full-time job. <laughs> Cletus and I, of course, want children. Uh-huh. I'm just dead for some, but I don't want to be tied down just yet. Children can be such a lot of trouble. <laughs> sure, if they don't receive the proper disciplinary guidance. Children must be taught. <laughs> I'm sure you are aware of the problem, since your children can be so 
high spirited themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but well behaved. Now you take my little Cheryl, a precious little angel. <laughs> what about Vernon Jr.? And little Roger is so sweet. Oh, for the first month he was so quiet, we thought he was deaf. And Vernon Jr.? <laughs> what about him? <laughs> my neighbors, the Burns, had some trouble with Vernon. Oh, you're, fr you're friends with the Burns? <laughs> I'm neighborly with them, but never friendly. I don't want them to get the wrong impression. So, so one of their kids is playing with Vernon? Yeah, he's uh, just now getting out of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what was his name? Chester Burns? Oh, I know him. The Burns boy, a born liar. Just like his father, Bobby Burns. Remember, we used to call him Lyman and Burns in grade school? Patty, yeah. it's for you. Excuse me. <laughs> Corey. It's Mary. Are the children acting up? Something about a bonfire. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Mary Ann, hello. What's wrong? Oh, oh, are you, you coughing? Do you have a cold? Oh, that much smoke, huh? <laughs> uh huh. We'll turn the fan on. Oh, they did what? No, no, they wouldn't do that to Poochie. They love that dog. <laughs> <laughs> At least they wouldn't do it on purpose. <laughs> uh huh. Well, well, Marion, you know Poochie is a Pekingese. They have long hair. They catch on fire easily. <laughs> uh huh. Well, well, Mary, Mary, Marion, Marion. It could have been a lot worse. It was just the tail. Oh, Marion's dog, Poochie's tail, caught on fire. She's trying to frame my children. She's just very overprotective about that animal. <laughs> wow, it's just look at all this. Oh, that's nothing. Elizabeth, it looks wonderful. No, it's only crackers and dips. So what brings you out this way, Amy Oh, just a visit. Uh-huh. And to do some business. Uh-huh. <laughs> Girl, it's that time of the year again at First Baptist. <laughs> Not pancake supper? You guessed! Mm, how much are tickets? Five dollars. That's a lot to pay for a stack of flapjacks. All the proceeds go to charity. Last year they made me sick. They were leathery. Our mission in Paraguay has worked wonders. Paraguay? Where's Paraguay? <laughs> South America? It's a very backward country. Yeah, well, no wonder. The only people who go there are people from game shows and Baptists. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, there are souls need saving there. The people are starving to death, and we bring them Jesus. If they're starving, why don't you bring them a hot meal? <laughs> oh, we do. All sorts of good things. Like what? Instant eggs, powdered milk. Mmm, yummy. The underdeveloped countries need the blood of the lamb. Blood of the lamb? Yeah, the forgive forgiveness of God. <laughs> Compassion of Christ. Christian charity. <laughs> and we got to hurry up because the Catholics got a head start on us. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, how could you say that? Communism flourishes in Catholic countries. You're Methodist. That's practically Baptist. <laughs> I don't know that. Well, I don't. <laughs> Hattie, how were you raised? With a stick. <laughs> That's right. Spare the rod and spoil the child. I forget your people are from Mississippi. Yes, we were in agriculture. Anyway, in many Catholic countries, the only thing standing between us and the red threat are Protestant missions. Lord, Amy Lee sounds like you've joined the John Birch Society. <laughs> oh, honey, I can't. I'm involved in too much club work as it is. <laughs> well, um, here's a, here's a, here's my five. Oh, think of this as a contribution to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, well, will the kingdom of heaven take a check? Uh-huh. A contribution to a better world. And isn't that what we all want for our children? As mothers and mothers to be. <laughs> Don't you worry, Amy Lee. You're a real mother already. <laughs> Excuse me. I gotta go to the little girl's room. Patty, <laughs> pass you. No, oh, I never listened to Heidi when she's talking like a sharecropper's daughter. <laughs> Which she is. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in the box? What box? That box. Oh, <laughs> I, I forget my own head. 
head if it wasn't screwed on. <laughs> it's the air filter. What air filter? For your air conditioner. Uh, I don't need one. What? Oh, Clay, that's tell me you did. No, my filter's fine. It's the motor. The damn thing won't turn on. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, Clay just told me y'all talked and he said it looked like it might be your air filter, so I decided to run one out. No, no. Didn't talk to Clay this. Oh. No. Talk to James. That's right. Uh, Clay just told me James had taken the order and he said it, it looked like it might be your air filter, so I decided to run one out. Oh, well, bless your heart. <laughs> Where's the box? There. Oh. <laughs> I don't want you to lose it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so. How have you been, Hattie? Fine. I'm so glad. <laughs> How's Vernon? Oh, well, you know, he's... You never ask about Vernon. What's going on here? What were you two talking about? Oh my God, were you two talking about me? I leave the room and people just start talking about me. I'm an object of gossip. No, no, no. <laughs> we're talking about you. Yeah. Oh, well good. <laughs> but I think Amy Lee was about to tell me something. Oh, well, Elizabeth. Go on, Amy Lee. Yeah, what is it? Not in front of Hattie. What do you mean, not in front of Hattie? Anything you say to Elizabeth, you can say to me. Go on, Amy. Well, it's about Roy. What about Roy? It pains me to say this. Yeah, I bet. I saw Roy yesterday. Really? Where? Here in Maynard. And? It pains me to say this. Force yourself. Well, he wasn't alone. What's he with? Margaret Crown. Margaret Crown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <gasps> Thank you, Amy Lee. I thought you should know. Thank you. I thought you should hear it from someone who cares. I'm sorry. Why? Because? Well, there's nothing to be sorry about. I knew Roy was with Margaret Crown. You did? You did? Yeah. He called yesterday. He was late for supper. Said he'd give him Margaret Crow a lift. Oh, Elizabeth. You see there? I feel horrible. You ought to. I feel terrible. People like you start rumors. It's okay, anyway. <laughs> Vicious tongue. You want me to go? I know you do. Sit down. How could you stand to look at me? It's not easy. Sit down. <laughs> I'll fix you a drink. I'll fix it. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, can you forgive me? I forgive you. Oh, you're a Christian soul. Isn't she a Christian soul? Oh, hell, yeah, we're all Christian souls. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad. Yeah, forget it. So many bad marriages lately in Maynard have got me unnaturally suspicious. What do you mean? The American family is just falling apart. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Strong. It goes down smoother the second sip. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> now what's all this about all uh, about Maynard? <sighs> Maynard, Texas has just become another painting place, that's all. Yeah, we'll tell. People are just running around on each other. Well, who? Laura Weems. Who would run around Laura Weems? <laughs> no, her husband's running around on her. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> this is her third marriage. It sure is. There's something seriously wrong about Loretta's approach to modern marriage. Kind of well. Dorothea Hicks is expecting. Well, what do you expect? She's Catholic. But six children? She doesn't have children. She drops litters. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Joe Gilcrease. Divorce? Pregnant. Oh, no. They can't afford that child. Of course not. What does her husband even do? Works at the amusement park over in Snyder. Runs the go kart ride. Oh, brother. <laughs> but you want to know the best part? What? He doesn't want the child. Oh, no. Yeah, she told me that he told her that if she got pregnant, that was her tough luck. She could just raise it herself. That man has no sense of responsibility. But listen to this. There's more. You want to know what Jenny Joe is contemplating? What? Abortion. 
Abortion? Yes. <gasps> no! <gasps> Where'd she get one? I don't know. She can't get one in Maynard. She'd have to go to some place with no morality, like Dallas or Houston. But, but can you imagine her position? <laughs> well, she should have gotten herself pregnant by a man who raced go-karts. Hattie, you're being heartless. <laughs> Hattie is just telling it like it is. She knows plenty of people who've married for money. I wished you two could hear yourselves. Why? What's that? So Jenny Joe's gone and gotten herself pregnant. What business is it of yours? So her husband doesn't want it. What business is it of yours? She probably told you all that because she had nobody else to listen to. Nobody that she could open up to. God, don't you know she feels like the loneliest person in the world? You know what, Elizabeth? I'm sorry. Yes. We shouldn't have picked on that poor, pregnant Catholic girl like that. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know what got into me. I didn't mean to spoil the party. Here, have some dip. Oh, this is good dip. <laughs> Thank you. They're fresh avocados. I grow them out in the garden myself. <laughs> 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 uh, so I knew that was your bridge game, girl. Oh, that? It's fine. What? Don't tell me you've given up bridge. Well, no. It took me forever to learn bridge. Thank heavens. But just in a few months, I wonder whether anyone will be playing bridge at all. What? <laughs> Haven't you heard the news? <laughs> Haven't what you heard? News? No, what news? Oh, Elizabeth, surely you know. She doesn't. Oh, well, you must. I tell you, she doesn't. How do you know? Because if she knew, she'd tell me and then I'd know. But she doesn't, so I do. What news? Bridge is on the way out. <laughs> oh, God. There is a new game. Was it hard? <laughs> <laughs> it's a poultry parlor game that uh, is oriental. Is it harder than Brit? I'm it? sure it's going to be the new rage. <laughs> what, what's the name of it, Amy? Don't you just know it's going to be hard? Hush up, Hattie. You don't know if it's going to be hard. What's his name, Amy? Matt John. <laughs> <laughs> Matt John. <laughs> Matt John? <laughs> I've heard of that game. Well, I haven't. Trudy Stevens just came back from Dallas, and she just bought a Matt John set at Neiman Marcus. Uh, that sounds like Trudy. You know it's going to be hard. Patty, we don't know anything about this game except that it's oriental. It might not be bad. I'm really good at Chinese checkers. You see there? This is nothing like Chinese checkers. <laughs> <laughs> Matt John is a culture parlor game that's been around for thousands of years. See, they had all that time to make it harder. Hush up, Patty. You don't know if it's going to be hard. It is very hard. Oh, my God. I knew it. <laughs> Even Trudy can't figure it out, and she does comparative shopping. Patty, oh. hush. You're getting worked up over nothing. <laughs> oh, you mustn't let it upset you so. I'm not upset. How do you play? Let's play with tiles. Tiles? Like, like bathroom tiles? <laughs> no, silly. <laughs> Ivory tiles, like dominoes. Except, instead of the little dots, uh, each tile represents a different style of tile. Like one tile would be three winds, or four bamboos, or five dragons. <laughs> then you pass your left, then you pass your right. Then, of course, there's your courtesy pass, a whirlwind of excitement. Then you want to build your wall. No, stop, stop. I'm not building anything. It's no use. I bamboos, dragons, winds. No. It took me a year to learn bridge. I focused my entire being on bridge. I neglected my housework. My children, they nearly starved all for a bridge, which I finally learned. I can't go through that again. I can't go through that hell again. It'd kill me. Well, of course, if you don't want to learn the game, then you won't be able to play. Shut up. I'll play if I want to. Oh, you won't play if you don't know the rules. Oh, I'll not know the rules. I'll know the rules. Because we're going to keep playing bridge. We're not changing games midstream. Addy, what are you talking about? I know what you're doing. You're trying to pull a fast one. You and Trudy Stevens are the only two who know the rules, and you're trying to get us all to play this stupid game so you two can clean up. We are not. Yeah? You just want to be a couple of mad drawn hustlers. I know for a fact you cheat at bridge. We what? Why did you come here anyway? To give Elizabeth this. Yes. And what is this? I've been wanting to know all afternoon. <laughs> Oh my god. Is this Mad John? <laughs> <laughs> Are these the tiles? <laughs> oh my god, they're so big! <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't tiles! Then what is it? It's an air filter. Well, what's all that got to do about an oriental parlor game? <laughs> nothing! Absolutely nothing! My god, you're stupid! You're an idiot! You're as stupid as that husband of yours, and he's a moron. Calling me a moron? Oh, no, no, no. He's the moron. You're just an idiot. Shut up, Angry. You watch what you say about Vernon dealing. He's twice.
what's the man Skeeter full or noise? They don't call him Skeeter no more. Everybody calls him Skeeter. He may have been Skeeter once, but he's married to me now and he ain't never gonna be Skeeter again. Uh-huh, how come? Because of the appliance store, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Country Club, that's how come. Yeah, well, I'm breaking into the Country Club next year. <laughs> you and what army? You can't keep me out. What makes you think I can't? You little bitch. Calm down, both of you. <laughs> she can't talk to me like that. We grew up together, Amy Lee Bradley. Your folks were just as poor as mine. Yeah, but at least my daddy was in a sharecropper. Well, at least I didn't marry for money. Yes, I married Skeeter Fullenoy, and I did all right for myself. I'm in the country club, aren't I? There's nobody eligible in this stupid town. We all know that. Wayne Wilder was the best thing that ever happened to you. And he's a car thief. Amy Lee. Wayne Wilder jilted you. You married Vernon and you had a kid right off the bat. That always seemed very funny to me. You take that back. No, I don't have to. You do. You want to say help me? Oh. <laughs> Hattie. Hattie. Today was a great day. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter nearly got arrested for shoplifting. My eldest son set fire to my mother-in-law's pickanese. And a bat just burped on my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's a pretty sunset. Yeah, it's my favorite time. That's one thing Texas is good for. Sunset. The only time things get soft. Look, Kevin. Evening star. <laughs> Just quit thinking about Margaret Crow. Hattie. Hmm? Sorry it never worked out for you and Wayne. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I think that's what we've been talking about all afternoon. Roy and I. Wayne and you. Hell no. I'm better off with Vernon. He's not worth kicking off a porch, but we're, we're comfortable together. Wayne was too, he was too, hell, Wayne was Wayne. <laughs> sure, I loved him. You bet. Well, I love Roy, Hattie. And he needs me right now. He may not know it, but he does. And I'm going to be here. Better go pick up the kids. Okay. We never did finish your laundry. That's all right. I'll get to it. You hang on to Roy. I intend to. He's the last wild thing around here. Uh, call me if you see my other shoe. All right. I'll let you. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Yeah. Call me. <laughs> 